Hi everyone. I got a hold of some more buffalo tallow. I'm happy. <laughs> Anytime I pick up some of this stuff, it just makes me happy. It's, I don't know what it is about, uh, well, here, let me explain what I'm talking about. If you've ever smelled freshly uh, rendered beef tallow, it has a beefy aroma to it. I personally don't have any aversion to that. Uh, the same with the uh, camel milk had a bit of a smell. The now we'll take the reindeer milk. Uh, all of them tend to have their own individual aromas, many of which can be uh, alleviated with saponification. And those that don't, uh, those odors that do survive saponification, oftentimes can be masked with essential oils, or if you use fragrance oils, those indeed. But I'm telling you the honest truth, this buffalo tallow doesn't have that smell. Now, I've seen him render this. I know what it looks like when he renders it. Um, and he does it the same way a thousand other people do it or thousands of people do it. But I've not seen other people do buffalo tallow. So I don't know if it is the method, if the, you know, whatever it is, it just comes out smelling clean. And I love that about it. So you don't have to mask it. Anyway. So what I've done is I've heated my olive oil and I'm just slowly melting the buffalo tallow in my olive oil. This takes a little while, but I like to treat it gently. As I've said before, I really believe in respecting the ingredients and especially those that come from, well, the animal kingdom. Um, these animals didn't die in vain. Um, I know a bit about that, and I also know how they're treated. I know that they're raised organically, and they're grass-fed, and that they're well-treated. That means a lot to me in any ingredient that I'm using. Even when I'm only using plants, I like to think that the plants were raised in a clean and as natural as possible environment. Now, I realize it's not always possible in a natural environment. Sometimes things have to be grown in a greenhouse because the temperatures just aren't right for growing them, you know, at a certain time. So that's not natural, but it's certainly acceptable, right? We're, <laughs> I don't think any of us are opposed. Is it the same? Well, I think there is variation. Obviously, if you've eaten a greenhouse tomato compared to a vine-ripened tomato, you certainly know the difference. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I know I tend to veer off. I have been so busy, everyone, and I apologize. That's why I'm so talkative right now. <laughs> um, I'm not. When I stated I was sick or not feeling well, let me clarify that. I'm not sick. I feel great, actually. Um, I took some time off work between going back to my old position and leaving the position, the filler position, uh, that I took at the same company and I took the time because I needed some rest and then I had 17 goat babies born uh, and that was really a challenge uh, now you may think well the goats do all the work they have the babies and it's completely on them right well that's true um, but sometimes there are complications and I won't go into a lot of detail, but some of them needed help at midnight, two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning. There have been some sleepless nights. I had to bring two in and put them in the bed with me, two of the newborn babies that were, the mothers had them out in a puddle. The mother had her babies in a puddle of water in 30 degree weather. Well, it was close to 30. I think it was 32. Uh, and they all were, for all intents and purposes, they were dead. So I brought them in, of course, warmed them up, massaged them, and got them both breathing and 
put them in my bed. I've done this before. It sounds silly and it may be gross to some people, but keep in mind, these are tiny little babies. You know, they're no bigger than this. And so I just put a towel in the bed and then I move them right up against my chest and the tummy, which I have an ample amount of, and let my body heat keep them warm. It's the same thing that the mother would do except the mother was completely unattentive and abandoned them. This can happen with new mothers. Sometimes this was a new mother, and that's what happened. Anyway, uh, they both survived, I'm very happy to say. But anyway, I haven't been getting all the sleep that I normally would be getting. The... Uh, Goat milk that I'm going to be using in this actually is very fresh. It's from today. You may remember that I showed you that one of my goats, unfortunately, had lost one of her babies. Well, her, the surviving baby is favoring one teat. And the other one is, well, it's painful for her because, well, it needs to be milked. So... I've been milking her, and so this milk will be her milk, and she's very happy to be milked. I, I see some people who are very much opposed to using things like milk and soap because they feel like we're kind of enslaving, you know, the goats to give us the milk. I sure don't think about it that way. I love my animals. I... I love my animals more than I believe some people probably love their families, depending on the family, of course, and the animal. But I would never take from them anything that, I don't know. This is a very delicate subject for me. I love using goat milk, and I think that it makes a huge improvement in soaps. I see discussions about which is better using powdered milk or fresh milk or store-bought milk. Of course I'm partial to my own. Why? First of all, I know how it's made. I know what the animals ate. I know that they've never been given antibiotics, hormones. My animals are very healthy. Um, they live off the land, the grass, the tree leaves and uh, weeds and vines and all sorts of wonderful things um, that make their milk so wonderful. And I, I, I just feel that it, it, the, the soap itself, I have tried soap with powdered milk. I've used soap. I have made soap with powdered milk. Uh, I had some of my own milk powdered by a local farmer who does his own, makes his own powdered milks. And I did try it. And did I find the finished soap much different? I would have to say, yes, I did. But then again, I'm partial. Perhaps I am biased because of, you know, making my own. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there, I suppose. I'm going to set this aside. We're going to get the said goat milk and we're going to go ahead and get it ready to put our soap together. Now, I was something I forgot to mention. Um, I do freeze my bowl prior to making the lye. Um, in another video, I'd mentioned that one of the things I like about cooler weather, since you don't have to, or I don't have to anyway, um, do a ice bath. But also, because this is fresh goat milk, that is very high in colostrum because it is from a new mother. I treat it much more delicately. And by freezing the bowl, I am just helping to 
I had a little bit of additional insurance to make sure I don't burn my soap, uh, burn my goat milk, excuse me. How do you know when goat milk is burned? Well, first of all, it turns sort of a pumpkin orange <laughs> and stinks of ammonia. Uh, something you don't ever want to have happen. I've been very fortunate that that hasn't happened to me. Um, but I have smelled soap that that's happened to when I was helping someone else and they were making soap. Um, and I refrain from saying it's because they didn't follow my instructions, but they didn't follow my instructions. <laughs> all right, so anyway, uh, where was I with all this? So as I had stated before, uh, when the job stuff happened and I was getting all that overtime, I got a little worn out and tired. And that's why I needed to take some time off from work. And I initially took off a week, but I'm actually going to take off another week. And I won't be returning back to work until, what is it, the, not this coming Monday, but the Monday after. And I'm talking to you on Saturday evening right now while I'm making this. So, yeah. So I won't have to go back to work this coming Monday, but the Monday after that. I just, I have, please understand, I have a, several hundred hours of vacation time. So it's nice to be able to use some of that time just to get myself back in order. And it's a good thing too with all the goats giving birth uh, so close together. And that's, that's great. Uh, it's, it is a lot of work, but it's done and over with rather quickly. Once um, everybody's healthy, I do have one mother that has mastitis. And I do have to treat her. But other than that, everybody is doing tremendous. And I couldn't be happier. And any of you that raise goats, uh, you have been down this road before. So you're well aware of it. And um, let's see, what else? The sale was a booming success, as much as a sale can be. Obviously... Um, when you have a sale and you're giving that big of a percentage off, you know, people are going to buy it. Um, of course, it knocks your profit margins down substantially. But the truth is, my profits aren't very high to begin with. And the reason why I did that is I just felt that it was a good time to clear out some things. And it worked very well to do that. Um, I'm about to make uh, some more body butter because I sold out. I... I think I sold 60 jars of that. I um, ser hair serum, uh, tinctures, butters, uh, salves went really well, and a bunch of grab bags and some individual soaps. So it really worked really well, um, which I like because it's the new year and I want to make some new things, and of course uh, restock. Uh, some of the very popular items, the most popular items, you know, are always the avocado, so my avocado, the oatmeal, no, uh, goat milk and honey, uh, you know, there are, there are several, the lavender, there are several like that, and if you're a soap maker, these are probably ones that you keep on the burner too. Um, so this is a good opportunity to clear out stock that's not old by any stretch, but I love making it, so it just allows me to make more of it. And anyway, I could not have imagined when I started this channel in last year that it would lead to the, or was it last year? You know, I don't know. I think it, it was. I have to look. I have to look at my own about <laughs> and see when the channel started. Uh, but anyway, it's been, oh, I guess it has been over a year now. Um, and one of the wonderful things about it uh, is that I have made just absolutely um, a real turnaround in being able to do this online for me that this was a scary thing for me when I started and now it is so comfortable. Now, I don't show my face very often, pretty rarely I suppose, and 
in 2020, I'm going to try harder to do some face on uh, videos for you. That's a promise I made to myself that I would try. Um, although you may be the one being punished by that, <laughs> but I will try to do one of those real soon uh, and try to continue throughout the year. Because of I live in a rural area and my internet is not the best, I can't really do live streams that look great. I just don't, we don't, I've got decent bandwidth for, you know, uploading videos, that kind of thing. But when it comes to live streaming, it always looks like crud. Um, I just don't have a good, strong connection. So that's what I need before I can move forward with that. All right, so our goat milk is almost completely melted now. And then we'll be able to combine it with our oils. And I will be adding to this, this is about 100 ounces of soap. And I'll be adding about 75 ounces of sea salt. Now what's wonderful about this sea salt is it comes from right down the road from me. Um, from a town called Grand Saline. It's actually named after salt. Uh, and you can look this up online. Morton Salt is actually located there. They get the salt from the salt mines there. Huge salt mines. And they're just not far from me at all. Uh, less than 30 miles away. And that's where this salt came from. I've done Dead Sea Salt. I've done sea salt from California. I've done sea salt from France. And it seems silly when there is salt right here not to do some salt. Matter of fact, hold on a moment. I want to show you something. I have a, this big block of salt <laughs> directly from there. Isn't that great? If you can get a good look at that or not. If you look here, you can see a vein going through there. It looks like dirt. Um, that is actually salt too. It's just when you see different color salts, it's because different minerals affect them. And anyway, I could go on and on about salt, but this particular soap is going to have uh, a, that Texas sea, sea salt in it. And it sounds funny, right? I am definitely inland. And so you think sea salt from where you are? Yep, it's from ancient seabeds. Um, just because it's ancient salt doesn't mean that it's not sea salt. Uh, there are, well, you can read all about it online. I won't bore you with my own half knowledge. All right. So give me a few moments. I'm going to get my oils together, get my molds ready, because as you know, with salt bars, they set up really quickly. So I'll be right back with you. So I've got a little bit of rose clay here that I'm going to separate some out with just to give it a little bit of a pink swirl because I'm going to be topping this with some large grain uh, Himalayan pink sea salt. I'm going to be fragrancing this with eucalyptus essential, <laughs> eucalyptus essential oil, rosemary essential oil, and grapefruit essential oil. I'm just going to separate out a small amount of this. Oh, that smells so good. I love those 
fragrances together. How wonderful is that? Okay, let me hit that with just the stick real quick. Okay, here's my salt. So I'm gonna set that aside. And in goes all the salt. Wonderful East Texas sea salt. Okay, better get my stick here. Okay, and now I'm going to add back in So the <clears throat> clay that I used didn't actually come through very well on these. Um, they are more of a pinkish yellow color. I was hoping that there would be more of the pink veining throughout, but that just didn't happen on these for whatever reason. And it could be the high salt content. I'm not real sure on that. but. Nonetheless, uh, they came out pretty nice. A few of them got a little damaged taking them out of the mold. My own fault for leaving them in the mold too long, um, then having to fight to get them out. <laughs> so, some good advice for you. Because salt bars do cure really super fast, it's important to take them out of the molds in a timely manner. And this is also why they're a little more challenging to put into a loaf mold and cut. But overall, my East Texas salt, sea salt bars with bison, tallow, and goat milk came out pretty terrific. They smell wonderful. I really like the pink sea salt on top. I think it gives a real nice variation. I'm just... My only regret is that the 
pink coloration didn't come through better. So I hope you enjoyed this, everyone. You have a terrific day. It's really great being back with you all. And I'll see you again real soon. Have a great day. Goodbye.